<laughs> Joining us now is Democratic Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. He was Hillary Clinton's running mate in 2016. We'll talk about what that's like uh, on the campaign trail. But, but first, I feel like Kamala Harris can handle Donald Trump um, on a prosecutorial level, especially given all the criminal charges still against him and the um, fraud, sexual abuse, defamation, he's been found liable, and also the fact that he's a convicted felon. This kind of puts him in her sweet spot. I, uh, Mika, I completely agree. Um, prosecutor versus felon. You know, I tried a lot of civil rights yeah. cases, and I recognize good lawyers, and Kamala is a great lawyer. And when she st stands on that stage with a convicted felon, that's a huge contrast. But I'll tell you the other contrast that I think might even be more palpable to voters, um, yesterday versus to today and tomorrow. Donald Trump is yesterday's chaos, and why would we go back to it? Kamala and her running mate are going to represent today and tomorrow. Tomorrow. And in any race, I always think that, you know, being the today and tomorrow candidate is much better than being the yesterday's chaos candidate. Mm -hmm. Senator Kane, Simone Sanders Townsend here. Hey, Simone. You know, you, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, I have to imagine that a lot of people are calling you for advice nowadays. Um, <laughs> you notably were the running mate to Secretary um, Hillary Clinton in her run in 2016. And that was a long process of selecting a running mate. This is a truncated process of maybe about a week, maybe two yeah. weeks. Um, what advice would you have for folks? Not asking you, you to divulge any private conversations unless yep. you'd like to. But what, no, what would you I tell some of these folks? Yeah, I, well, look, here's the way I think it'll go. I mean, I was vetted by Barack Obama in 08 and then Hillary in 2016, and each vet took two months. Um, and it was a big list, then a medium-sized list, then a short list, then a real mm -hmm. short list, then a pick. Um, I think the um, they have to do the, the in-depth vetting, but I think the short time means that the list will be a lot shorter. It's not going to be 20 people to 10 to 5 to 3 to 1. It's, it's going to be a handful who will be intensely vetted. And so, you know, we hear word that that's already going on. Um, Eric Holder, who's doing it for the uh, for the Harris for President ticket, uh, er Eric was in charge of it for Obama 08 and, and did a fine job in terms of so he knows what to do and the group of people who come together and volunteer their time to do the work is sizable and I'm sure that they've just sprung that network into action with a small group of contenders. Senator Kane, good morning. Um, there's reporting hey, that uh, one of the points that made President Biden decide to drop out of the race was a briefing that his aides gave him over the weekend that showed him a number of battleground state polls, had him losing all of them, but also suggesting that some pretty reliably Democratic states could be in jeopardy were he to remain the top ticket, including Virginia. And there has been public polling that show a neck and neck race there between Biden and Trump. So let me get your assessment of, of course, your home state. Do you think that was accurate from what you're seeing uh, each and every day talking to constituents? And do you think that that will change now that it's Vice President Harris atop the ticket? Um, Jonathan, that is accurate reporting. You know, I'm on the ballot this year, too, so I'm doing my own polling. And I shared with the uh, with the White House and with the Biden campaign last Wednesday the results of five uh, post-debate polls, public but also internal polls, that showed that the race was a dead heat. And I shared that directly with the White House and with the campaign because it was data that they needed to know. And they were doing their own polling as well. So, um, you know, Joe Biden won, Joe and Kamala won Virginia by 10 points in 2020. And so when you see polls saying it's a dead heat uh, in Virginia, you take that very seriously. Now, to the Biden-Harris and now Harris campaign's credit, I was at the an office opening Saturday in Stanton, Virginia. It was the 17th office that they have opened in Virginia. And unlike some past campaigns, these offices are staffed with fantastic Virginia political talent, not just, you know, whiz kids from other states coming into Virginia, but these are, are battle-ready Virginia tested campaign pros who were staffing these offices. And that was um, already happening, you know, before this switch was made and it's going to continue. They are taking Virginia very seriously. Yes, yeah, so and Mike, that's an interesting point the senator just raises there, that a state like a Virginia, we've heard the same with New Mexico, Colorado, even perhaps New Jersey. These are reliably blue states. Trump didn't even play in Virginia in 2020. He barely did in 2016. But this shows that had President Biden stayed atop the ticket, they were at risk of going away, and that would have opened up countless paths to 270 electoral votes for Donald Trump.
Well, but that's not going to be the case. No longer. And that gets me to my question to you, Senator Kane. The sitting president of the United States is a man known, noted, for his compassion, his decency, his empathy, and above all, his character. So my question to you, were you at all surprised at the level of attempted humiliation of the president over the past 10 days by dropped leaks from Democrats, members of Congress, members of the Senate, indicating that he just had to go. But it was the way and the language that was used to describe him being in the office and not having withdrawn a month ago. Did that surprise you? Mike, it, it, it made me sick, but it didn't surprise me. You know, the, the, it, it made me sick the way people were so quickly going and airing their concerns publicly when they had the White House's phone number. I mean, I had concerns, but I just picked up the phone and talked to folks in the White House and the campaign, shared concerns. Here's the polling data. I knew in my gut Joe Biden was going to make the patriotic call. If he was up to the job for the next four years and he told me that, then we're going all the way with him. But I also knew if he looked in the mirror and decided that he wasn't in it for the next four plus years, he'd level with the American public. And I think everybody should have respected him enough to know that he was going to reach the right call. So I, I was not happy with the degree of, of public airing of concern, but especially by the electeds. I get it if donors and pundits and pollsters talk publicly about their concerns, but those of us who had longtime relationships with this man and who've seen him again and again and again put country first, should we have communicated? Absolutely, but we communi you communicate directly, privately, and respectfully. And so, no, I, I was not happy about this over the last three and a half weeks. All right. Democratic Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia, thank you very much you for coming Glad on to the be show with you this guys. morning. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, you look like you're feeling better, too. I'm feeling great. Uh, I've been doing Good. too much hand, hand holding the last three weeks, and now we're off and running. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Good to see you.